Well, just when we thought it was warming up, winter is back this week at least. Let's head outside to meteorologist Jeremy Lagu with what we can expect for this week and just how many extra layers you're going to need as you head out the door this morning. Definitely maybe some sort of hood or something, Jeremy, because there's a lot of snowflakes coming down. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm loving it. I uh, <laughs> don't expect too much of this, but it's still rather fun. Nonetheless, you can see here a little bit of snow starting to pile up in the outdoor weather center. Not all that much, and we're expecting less than an inch out of this, but it's snow nonetheless, and it's something beautiful to take us into some bitter cold days. In my mind, there's no worse weather pattern than being below zero with bare ground. I grew up in Minnesota. Trust me, I know. 29 degrees right now, and our temperatures are going to keep sliding. 26 now in Coeur d'Alene, 31 in Moses Lake and Wenatchee, and 23 in Sandpoint. That cold is already starting to funnel in, and as wind picks up out of the northeast today, we'll see gusts near 30, 35, even close to 40 miles per hour at times, and that is what ushers in our Arctic air. Two inches of snow in the forecast for the high elevations throughout the day. That basically comes to an end at 10 a.m. for us here in Spokane. It's less than an inch as we move through, but right now the big story is the drop in temperatures and our wind chills being at zero to 15 degrees below that zero mark. That goes into effect tonight and runs through 10 a.m. on Wednesday because it is going to be that cold for that long. Right now, you can see some of that snow coming down, really coming down here on the South Hill. And as you move over into parts of North Idaho, it's moving kind of westerly now, but that's going to shift and it's going to actually kind of slide back to the south and the east as we move through the day as this thing starts to fall apart and dissipate. And what we'll wind up getting is that cold air moving in, taking over and clearing us out. Look at, I mean, it is going to be clear, but I'm telling you, sunshine, not really going to be a factor in the next couple of days because temperatures are going to be that kind of cold. We're in the 20s all day long, and tonight the drop starts, and that's with a whole lot of wind, so get ready to bundle up in the days to come. Well, the sheriff's office fired a deputy after an internal investigation. Craig Chamberlain is also running for sheriff. Current sheriff Ozzie Knezovich says the deputy knew they were conducting that internal investigation when Chamberlain decided to run for sheriff. Crem 2's Nicole Hernandez is live at the sheriff's office right now. Good morning, Nicole. Tell us what's going on here. Good morning, Tim. So as of right now, there are two people that are running for Sheriff Ozzie Knezovich's position. One of them, of course, the one that was fired last week. His name is Craig Chamberlain. Now, the sheriff's office fired Chamberlain after he wrote a character witness letter for a man who ended up being charged with possession of child pornography. Chamberlain posted on Facebook about the entire situation. The post says Sheriff Knezovich has a, quote, subjective belief that Chamberlain didn't tell the truth during that internal investigation. Chamberlain says he did write the letter, but he did not know what the man was suspected of when he wrote it. He knew the man through his daughter's volleyball team. Chamberlain also says he did not lie during the internal investigation and thinks this is connected to him running for sheriff. Unfortunately, I think this is um, politically motivated, obviously. Um, you know, the sheriff, he has, uh, I don't know what I've ever done to him, but he has zero faith in me to, that I have the ability to, uh, to run an organization. Chamberlain is running against under Sheriff John Knowles. Current Sheriff Ozzy Knezovich is endorsing Knowles' campaign, but Sheriff Knezovich says this was not a political move. It is very disingenuous for him to say that there's any political motivation. I'm not running for sheriff. I have, this is up to the citizens of Spokane County to choose the next sheriff. And I doubt they are going to choose somebody that has these type of issues and brings this type of discredit upon the office. So even after the sheriff's office fired him, Chamberlain is still planning on continuing his campaign. In Spokane, Nicole Hernandez, Crumb 2 News. 
Well, today, massive parts of Washington State's transportation bill will be up for debate in the state legislature. The $16 billion package provides historic funding for preserving the state's infrastructure, addressing climate change and expanding transit options, but also the border in Idaho. Governor Brad Little and Attorney General Lawrence Wasden sent a letter to Governor Inslee asking to stop Washington's proposal to tax fuel ship to Idaho. The tax is a part of the transportation bill, and according to little letter, two billion of the total budget will come from the exported fuel tax and will raise Idaho's gas prices by six cents a gallon. The time now is 6.05. It's time for your morning rush. More news in less time. A Ponderay County judge sentenced a man for nearly 28 years in prison for murdering and kidnapping Jason Fox. Claude Merritt will get credit for time already served and 36 months of community custody. The sentencing is exactly what the family of Jason Fox asked for in their victim impact statements. I would hope the court would give the maximum sentence. Because what he took from us and, and from the world is, is, is not replaceable. The final suspect believed to be involved in Jason's death will go to trial in May. Across the state line, Idaho is waiving its college entrance exam requirements for this year's graduates. The State Board of Education voted to waive the requirements for the high school class of 2022, meaning students won't have to take the SAT or ACT to get into Idaho universities. Right now, there is a proposed rule change in the Idaho legislature to permanently get rid of the test. Well, today is President's Day, meaning some things will be closed. Since it is a federal holiday, federal government offices will be closed. The city of Spokane remains open with normal hours. However, the post office, banks and libraries are closed. Spokane Transit will be running on its normal schedules, but it is a parking meter holiday, so the good news, you won't have to pay for parking downtown. The city did confirm that garbage and recycling will be on its normal schedule this week. After their 10th straight West Coast Conference win, the Gonzaga Bulldogs have been named the front runner for the top seed in March Madness. The Bulldogs beat Santa Clara 81 to 69 in the kennel on Saturday. Gonzaga, Auburn, Arizona and Kansas hold the number one seed in their respective regions. The Zags will play their last two games of the season on the road at San Francisco and St. Mary's. And that's a look at your morning rush. President Joe Biden has been clear that U.S. troops will not fight in Ukraine. And while this conflict is overseas in Eastern Europe, it could have very real impacts for us here stateside. Florian Justwan is an associate political science professor at the University of Idaho. He calls what's going on a, quote, blatant case of Russian aggression against a democratic country like Ukraine. He says if Russia invades Ukraine, energy prices would likely soar. Justwan says about 40 percent of Europe's gas imports come from Russia. Oil prices currently sit at $95 a barrel. Reuters reports it could hit $125 if Western countries follow through with sanctions. If this gas flow somehow got disrupted, the global markets would uh, drive up the price of energy pretty quickly. Markets generally don't like instability. So if there is some kind of political con or military conflict in Ukraine, we can absolutely bet that this is going to negatively affect stock market, energy prices, as I've already mentioned. Just one says the military conflict could also lead to massive Ukraine refugee flow. Now, uh, the Idaho Office of Refugees says they are watching things unfold and are in close coordination with federal and local resettlement partners. In the past 10 years, Idaho resettled 125 refugees from Ukraine. If a conflict were to come, the United States would probably respond with, um, with pretty heavy sanctions. Um, it would sanction Putin, Putin's inner circle, it would sanction uh, Russia's um, uh, financial institutions. Russia would probably sanction back. So those sanctions could potentially hurt some industries like semiconductor and aerospace industries. NPR reports that fertilizer is produced in both Ukraine and Russia. Disruptions to those exports could mostly affect agriculture in Europe, but food prices around the world could rise as a result. I think they're really cool and I think they're worth saving. Well, Spokane's historical neon signs buzz to life once more. And Boomtown is making national headlines, shining a light on Spokane's housing market.
And the one thing to know about the weather, forget this morning's snow, it's less than an inch. Sure, that'll have some impacts, but the real deal, it's the cold. In the days to come, it is going to feel like it is below zero across much of the inland Northwest. It's time now for your wake up call. With it being President's Day, we wanna know if you could have dinner or coffee with any U.S. president, who would it be and why? You can text us at the number 509-448-2000 or use the hashtag upwithcrem on social media. We've already received a few responses, so keep sending them in. But first, here's a live look outside. We say good morning to you, Inland Northwest. Happy Monday to you. We hope you had a great weekend and are just ready to take on this week. Let us know where you're watching from this morning.